these jeans are getting tight. I'm wearing jeans for the first time in I don't know how long. And if you're watching this in real time, you probably really understand where I'm coming from right now. And if you're from the future right now, we are about a month into a quarantine and I have not worn jeans in probably a month. And when I put them on this morning, I thought I'm gonna wear something that makes me feel a little less gross, a little less like I don't care <laughs> about anything. I've just been wearing like dirty yoga pants every single day. When I put these jeans on, it was like, oh my goodness, I feel like a stuffed sausage at this point. It's really, they're really uncomfortable. So if you see my face turning red or you see me going like this, it's because <laughs> I'm adjusting my too tight jeans. This week is just me rambling. I hope you enjoy it. I'm just gonna sit here and talk about everything that's on my mind, my current projects, the ones I just finished, and the one I am getting ready to start. I'm already not doing this right. I should have introduced myself to you in case this is your first time at my channel. I'm Elise from the blog LePetiteSaintCrochet.com. I love sharing all about crocheting and knitting and amigurumi and a little handmade business here and there. I live in North Carolina in the United States with my husband and our two boys and I have two daughters who are grown. We also have our beautiful rescue dog Jersey boy and our little kitten Olive who all right, let's talk about Olive. Let's go ahead and go there right now because Olive has become spoiled is not even the correct term. It goes way beyond spoiled. So my husband adores this cat. I love this cat. This cat is like my child. Not quite, but you know what I mean. But my husband, this cat is his baby. And every morning he always takes Jersey Boy out for a walk. That's just our routine. And if it's not my husband, it's me or one of the boys. He has started taking Olive out on her harness into the yard and letting her go all around and he sits out there and he brings his laptop and he works while she runs around and she climbs trees. He's got the harness on with her leash so she's never in any danger but now if she doesn't get that in the morning we start hearing her talking to us and she starts meow 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 all the time. So you may hear her. She's already been out this morning but it's not enough for her. So until she takes her afternoon nap she's going to drive everybody a little bit crazy. She is adorable though. Thankfully, she is probably the cutest little thing ever. So we just all adore her and we give into her whims. That's the problem. That is the crux of the matter right there is that she's so darn cute that we give into everything. She's kind of turning into a little bit of a monster. Speaking of monsters, I am doing the mystery crochet along with Amigurumi by Guli. This has been so much fun. So yesterday was day five and we are creating this little monster. But what was really fun about this is that from day one, two, three, and four, we had no idea what in the world we were creating. So yesterday was the first day that we really put the whole like head on, but we still don't know what's going on because there are more pieces that we have yet to put together. So there's this weirdo piece. What in the world is this? I have no idea what this is going to be. Here's this thing which at first I thought was maybe a tongue, but I don't know what, I have no clue what this is gonna be. Then we have six of these little things. I just don't know, it's really fun though. I really love all of Amigurumi by Ghoulie's designs. They're typically very, very detailed, which I love. And I also learn a lot from her because she does things that are a little bit different than what I've done before. And I would actually say that some of her techniques are more advanced Amigurumi skills so when I did a project called Grunkle back in the fall of, when was that? Fall of 2018. There's a whole story behind Grunkle, which I will tell in just a second. There were so many details with this project. I really got a little bit frustrated during it because I wasn't able to do certain parts of it and she and I were messaging back and forth and she was so great to really show me how to do things. I would really recommend if you're looking to challenge yourself, do one of her patterns. Now this mystery 
crochet along with this adorable little monster is free on her Instagram. So every day she has been posting the actual pattern and then she actually has videos. Now she is Turkish and she is not speaking English, but it doesn't really even matter. I actually just turn my volume all the way down and then I just watch what she's doing and it has been so incredibly helpful and I have learned quite a bit with this and I feel like sometimes stretching yourself and doing a project that maybe is not, maybe it's a little bit out of your skill is a good thing. I always like to try projects that maybe they're just a step above what I'm good at, what I feel comfortable with because that stretches my skills. I learn how to do something new and then the next time I do something I'm like oh yeah I remember doing that with that other project and I can easily do it. So I would really recommend you trying it and what's the worst that can happen is that your project doesn't turn out great. There are issues with this little guy I'm not gonna lie but I still think he's looking really cute and I cannot wait to see him in the end. I will post a picture of him on Instagram when I'm completely finished with him. I've actually been sharing every night in my Instagram stories progress video of how it's going and it was really fun trying to figure out what he is. I don't know if you can hear Olive in the background but she is crying so I'm gonna let her down here <laughs> and we'll see how this goes. So before I actually share my project Grunkle with you, that is not the name of the pattern from Amigurumi by Ghouli. It's actually Cody the Crocodile. So I'm gonna show you what it's supposed to look like. He's really cute, but as you can see, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of details. I learned so much, especially with those pumpkin feet. Oh my goodness, they gave me the literal hardest time. But one thing to note, if you are doing one of her patterns, number one, they're written in English. They're very well written, they're very well produced, they're of the highest quality, so I don't want you to feel like you can't do that if you do not speak Turkish because they are in English. Number two to note, and I didn't really, this didn't clue in to my brain, it really helped once I understood this, is that when she has a photo in her pattern of her doing something, she's left-handed. Now, why I couldn't figure that out, I don't know. This brain isn't as young and sharp as it used to be. That was really a stumbling block for me because I don't know why I, I didn't notice that in the photo. So when she was doing something, I would think, my crochet hook doesn't go that way. And I just literally, I had a blonde moment, even though there's so much gray coming through now. I had a total blonde moment. I couldn't figure it out. So once she told me, hey, by the way, I'm left-handed, so when you're looking at this, just realize if you're not left-handed, that's not how this is going to go. You do a mirror image. So that's when I was like, oh, it made, then I was able to do it once I realized that. So that's just a little tip for you. So here is my little Cody the Crocodile, also known as Grunkle around here. And as you can see, something doesn't look really right with him, and here's what happened. So if you notice here on the face, he has no eyes, and he has no snout here, and that's because a dog ripped it off. Now, don't go blame a Jersey boy because Jersey didn't do it, so it was my mom's dog. So here's the whole story in case you care about it. I actually wrote an entire blog post about it because I ended up having so much fun with it because we created a whole mystery around it. What happened was my daughter Caroline loved Grunkle and she wanted him for herself and I thought of course she can have him. I gave Grunkle to her and she had it in her room. Now my daughter Caroline lives with my mom now. So my daughter Caroline is in her 20s. My mom is a lot older than that. So my daughter is there to kind of help my mom out and it allows my daughter to have a little bit of freedom so that she doesn't have to live at home and it is a mutually very nice situation for both of them for all of us really. My mom has a wonderful dog named Pippa. Now Pippa is quite young still. She's only three, about to turn three, and this was over a year ago, so she was only two, so really almost still a puppy. And let me just say, she is a very um, active and mischievous dog, and she got a hold of Grunkle and ripped his face off. This is the exact reason why I do not call safety eyes safety eyes. They're not safe. That dog ripped those eyes right out of his head. So the eyes were actually here and here and she ripped them right off. Now it is a dog but it always has stuck in my mind and it has made me realize that I will never ever call them safety eyes again. Well I call them safety eyes but I will never think of them as safety eyes again. They're not safe and that is a misnomer to lull yourself into a sense of security that they could not come off, a child could not choke on them or a dog or whatever. I will never do that again. Now I am extremely cautious Anytime I sell something now, I list it in the Etsy listing that this is not a toy. What I create are not toys for children. They really are just collectible things, nursery decor, those types of things. And now, especially when
when I knit toys now, I actually do French knots, which that's a lot more safe. They're not a hard piece of plastic that could get caught in a throat. Now I am still going to use safety eyes. That's not to say I'm not going to use safety eyes because I'm going to for all of my amigurumi, my crocheted projects, that's the way it is. But they are not intended for children to use that are under three years old. Now, if a child is a little bit older and they are not going to rip this thing out with their teeth, then that's fine. Just a word of caution, be really, really, really careful if you are selling or giving your toys away that you are explaining to people that those eyes can come off. They're not like manufactured toys that have eyes that are literally concreted into those toys' heads and are never gonna come out because ours are handmade. So that's just a little word of caution. I am one of these people who thinks of all the most horrible things that could happen in a situation, so. <laughs> My mom calls me a little ray of sunshine sometimes because I can think of literally any horrible situation I can see it coming a mile away. That's my spiel. If you want to go see the Grunkle post, it's really ridiculous. I created a whole story and a mystery about how this happened and how we solved the crime and that some of the other Amigurumi toys were investigators and detectives. So I actually had a lot of fun with it, but that's just my childish imagination going crazy. So now let's talk about my finished project this week. I am in love. I must say this of course is a pattern from Little Cotton Rabbits and it is the fox pattern and I'm in love you guys. I'm not selling this one. This one's mine. I'm keeping her all for my own. This is from the textured dresses pattern which I had never used before. I have done the seasonal dresses. I've done the dresses that come with each animal pattern but I just recently purchased the textured dresses pattern and I'm in love. I literally am you know I was really in a color work phase before and I wanted to do all the color work all the fair aisle and I was really enjoying that but right now I'm I don't know I think maybe it's because we are in this crazy time and I just want a little simplicity I want something that is beautiful but maybe a little more simple and I think that this turned out so gorgeous this is the little dot dress in that pattern pack there are 20 different textured dress patterns in the one pattern. So you are getting such an incredible deal. So they're all based on categories. So for the simple knit and purl designs, there are six of them. There are actually six different dresses that just use a combination of knit and pearls to create these different little textures, which I think is really cool. There are five little cable ones. So you would use a cable needle and I haven't looked at those really carefully yet, but I'm really excited to do that. I love doing cables. I had an issue with the last cable knit sweater I did for <laughs> a little bunny and that one was really hard, but that's because I was trying to do other things while I was cabling. I don't recommend that. When you're using cables, take yourself aside unless you are a cable master, but I am not and I need to focus, focus, focus. Then there are seven lace eyelet patterns. Oh, I'm gushing because they are so, so beautiful. And then there is one of the slip stitch design. There's one of those. I cannot get over how much I love the Little Cotton Rabbits. I love all the Beatrix Potter, the Wind in the Willows, and this is the feeling that I get when I make these. Now, this little girl's name is Fern, and I just think she's so beautiful. I just love her so much. I feel like she looks like she's out of the 1930s or the 1940s with this little dress. Another thing that comes with this this pattern that I love is she has two different style collars. So you can do a knit or crochet. And of course I chose the crochet because it's just a little bit easier. You don't have to pick up stitches when you add a little crocheted collar. So this looks a little bit different. Now she has free on her website and on Ravelry. There's actually a Peter Pan collar pattern that is free on Ravelry if you want to look at that. And I use that for a lot of the different ones. I just think it adds just a little something to it. One thing that I did with her this time is I added blush. Now I use blush on a lot of the different toys, but I, had, I don't know why I never thought to do it on one of the little cotton rabbits. I just think that it added so much. So from this point on, I'm going to be adding blush to my little cotton rabbits. They're so precious. There's something about this beautiful vintage rose color that I don't know. I really love it. And I just, I love the old fashioned feel of this. I did not alter this dress pattern at all. A lot of them I do and I make a fuller skirt. This one I did not. I made it exactly to the T the way the pattern is written and I really couldn't be happier so I'll turn her around she has the little button up here she's got little mustard colored underwear and there's her little tail I did just a navy blue Mary Jane's and the little socks <laughs> 
I hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope it wasn't me just sitting here rambling and you're thinking, why in the world does this lady keep talking? I really just wanted to connect with you. My brain is really having a hard time doing anything that takes a tremendous amount of effort right now. I don't know if you're in the same boat. It's just been a really difficult time. To me, right now, I am craving interaction. I am craving connection with people so much. So that's why I just wanted to make a video where it's like we're just sitting down and chit-chatting about all of our favorite projects and random things. I'm really glad you're here today. I'm so glad that you have stuck with me. You all mean the world to me. When you give me comments and let me know where you're from, I literally, I get so excited when I hear from you guys. So if you would leave me a comment, I would love to hear from you. I love knowing what projects are you working on? Are you a crocheter? Are you a knitter? Do you love amigurumi? Do you just think I'm a weirdo? I would love to hear from you though. And if you would please hit that like button, that subscribe button, that would be awesome. I'm going to leave links for all of the resources in the description box below. So you can find all of the patterns and you can find all the resources that way in case you want to make something for yourself. If you want to make a Cody the Crocodile for Halloween or one of the little cotton rabbits or this little adorable monster, I'm going to leave it all in the description box below. I'm going to see you guys really soon. I hope you all stay safe and happy stitching. Thank you.